and welcome to this episode of the Trading Business School podcast. I'm joined by the amazing Miranda Hill. How are you doing today, Don? I am amazing. I, I, I love these, these times where we get to have these conversations. And today we're going to speak about winning the week. Uh, we spoke about this recently in our free group trading and general contact is global on Facebook. If you're not a member yet, uh, please click the button somewhere around here. Join the group. Uh, every week, I'm in there either adding a short training video or a guide like this one to help you grow a better trades business more profitably and more enjoyably for free. But in this episode, we want to touch on winning the week, essentially how to run productive meetings that grow your business without wasting everyone's time. And even if you think that your leadership skills suck. <laughs> oh, so wherever you are tuning in from listening or if you're watching this, uh, stay tuned. It's a great conversation and it's one that really will change the rhythm of your business and the performance of your team. Absolutely. Now, if you are watching this, you'll notice we're going to go through a couple of slides. Uh, if you're not watching this, if you're listening to this somewhere on the work site, in your, your excavator, boat, wherever you are in the world, um, there will also be a link below this episode to get a free download of our Winning the Week document, which goes through uh, the key steps, but also the template of how we actually run our weekly meetings across all our various businesses. So let's get into it. I guess the first thing I want to speak about, Miranda, is the problem of not having, uh, you know, not having meetings in place, not having great meetings in place. And that is that ultimately your team is not productive. You're paying hourly rate for all your team to hang around, uh, to not really be profitable or productive. And ultimately, there's a lack of direction and focus within your organization as well. And lastly, you have disengaged employees. Now, if we get this right, we have an opportunity. Number of opportunities. Oh, I'll jump in here. So, yeah, we've got a number of opportunities. You'll have an, ex uh, sorry, I'm tripping over my words here, effective execution. So what that means, you, you'll be on, on target working on your business plan, wherever you want to go, heading towards your goals uh, in an effective way. Uh, your team will be in rhythm, in sync, knowing what they're doing, working efficiently. It's kind of like rowing a boat, isn't it, Miranda? It's like, you know, if you've got six rowers in one of those skulls or whatever they're called and one decides to not row at all, row backwards, the thing's just not going to cut through the water effectively. So I guess this is really around making sure everyone's in sync, in rhythm and rowing the same direction, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. I love that analogy. You can just see the boat sort of, uh, you know, someone all out of time and everyone's, yeah, it's all out of time and it's, you have to, a, lot of, a lot of water splashing around and certainly not efficient. You know, lastly, one of the, the opportunity is that you'll have an engaged, focused team because they they know what they're doing. They know where they're headed. They're in sync and that collective energy creates momentum. Yeah. And I guess the thing about like this, Miranda, is that, um, you know, if you look at people playing footy or, or basketball, there's a significant difference between teams that are playing with a scoreboard and without a scoreboard. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it, it's an interesting way. And I suppose, you know, look, you're looking at this, if you're watching, you'll see this light up with some stars at the moment. And I'll ask you this, how would you rate your team meetings currently out of five? How many stars would you give them? Five, four, three, two or one? And what would your employees rate them? Great question. Uh, and, and that might even be something to go and do employees and ask. It's like rate the meetings yourself on how effective they are, how engaged your employees are, and then ask them to, to rate it as well and see if you're actually in sync with your organisation or whether there's a bit of a misalignment too. Yeah. So I guess let's talk about the the kind of five, five key steps, Brandon. We want to talk about the five key steps to running an effective meeting and, and winning the week. And we also want to give you guys our Winning the Week template as well, which uh, is very, very powerful and effective to bring all these things to light. The first thing is we need to make sure that we set a rhythm. So within an organisation, at a minimum, you should be having a weekly team meeting. If you're a larger company, if you're a company that has multiple departments within your trades business, marketing, sales, delivery, and so forth, you might have multiple meetings. But the first thing is set the, the, the rhythm. What meeting is it? What uh, rotation is it? Is it happening weekly, monthly, you know, quarterly, annually? For argument's sake, the win of the week meeting is a weekly meeting. But you might also have monthly meetings to meet on your profit and loss, on your balance sheet, on your finances, quarterly to meet on your, your annual plans. We spoke about in a previous episode around uh, the ultimate game plan. That to be checked in on monthly, quarterly, and annually. But what's the meeting and what's the frequency or rhythm you're going to be operating in? 
Next is schedule. And I guess quite simply, this is putting something in play, putting it in a calendar, setting it for repeat, putting it in your, your job management software. So everyone's invited. They know that it's scheduled and that it happens like clockwork. Yeah. All right. It's really important to create that schedule. Setting the expectation of the people uh, that they're expected to be there. That's a meeting that matters. Um, booking it in there and blocking the time uh, and, and holding everybody to that. I, I, I see a lot of um, people that we've spoken to, traders, contractors, clients we've asked. It's like, okay, like you're meeting regularly. No, it's like, why? It's like, oh, because, you know, this client, Jane, requested me to be at the house or this person required that. I'm like, yeah, but these meetings are actually even more important than clients' meetings right like if you wouldn't go and cancel a client meeting last minute for another client why would you cancel your team meeting for a client this is one of those things that's working on your business to ensure that again everyone's rowing in the same direction your business plan's getting executed and everyone stays on the same page it's the difference between running an effective business that is is growing moving or, or healthy business versus one that borders on sometimes even dysfunctional where no one knows what they're doing um, and chaos begins to ensue Absolutely, absolutely. Now, step number three is creating agenda. Now, again, we, we advise you to download this book because on this, we'll show you the agenda we put together. And there's a few key things you'll see on this that, to be honest, were a game changer for us. We used to run meetings. We'd start off with KPIs. We'd, you know, talk about jobs. And I, and I would just watch my staff turn off. And I was like, right, how can I get them engaged through the gate? We tried a whole bunch of things. We tried watching funny videos on, on YouTube. We tried, you know, telling jokes. We tried a whole bunch of different things. But the thing that we found to be most effective is starting with the section you see on the screen here called Celebrate. We would shoot around the room and get all of our team to mention one thing that they're individually proud of and one thing that they see that the team has done well this week, Right. That allows us, or allowed me as a business owner to understand what's important for my team, for my staff. It allows us to get to know each other better, but allows us to start off on a high. You know, and following those two parts is what are a client's headlines? Like what's been a feedback, like testimony, a review that a client's given us this week that we can celebrate around, which also forced my staff that maybe necessarily weren't directly uh, involved in the client experience to get involved in the client experience. This whole celebration, which is 15 minutes at the most, right? 10 to 15 minutes of a 60 minute meeting was a huge advantage for us in, in bringing the team together and helping us to bond more as a company. Yeah, it's kind of adding structure to the chit chat that often happens at the beginning of a meeting. So I wonder if anyone, you, you're listening there as you, you, well, we get to our team meetings and we sort of a whole lot of time is, uh, you know, people will chit chat for a way. So you know, it's a contrast potentially of even launching straight into KPIs and numbers is often that that conversation that happens at the beginning. So add some structure to it and purpose to it and, and there will be a difference. You'll see on the screen, you know, for those who are listening, there's four kind of categories. Uh, one is celebrate, which you spoke about in there. There's three subcategories, individual, team and client. The next is report. Right, so in here, we want to report on just a quick overview of the key KPIs of the scorecard. So you might get your marketing person to speak about how many leads are generated, sales, how many sales are created, you know, operations, how many jobs did we deliver this week, right? Finance, you know, how much are we owed or how much do we owe? It's just a very quick helicopter overview so the whole company gets a bit of an indication of where the company's performing. The next on report is that these are quarterly rocks. Everyone shoots around and lets us know one of two things, I'm on track to complete my project for the quarter or I'm off track. Again, it gives everyone a bit of a, a bit of a touch point around, oh, that staff member is struggling a little bit. They, they, their win was very hard for them to come by. They're off track with the quarterly. There's something else going on here that I might want to pull them aside after the meeting and find out what's happening. Mm -hmm. right. It's a brilliant way for people. You, you get keeping track of account of, you know, what um, people are accountable for, uh, the progress of projects in the business, as well as knowing where you can support people. Yeah. Now, if they're off track, there's not a discussion. This this section is literally five minutes or less. It's like, Miranda, where you're at, on track. You know, Heather, where you're at, off track, right? Someone takes a note and we, we bring them back into the next part of the meeting we'll speak about in a second. But this is a very quick shoot around the room. Again, no talk, no chit chat. To the point the last part of report is announcements right one to three company announcements just again to keep everyone in the loop it's like you know any new hires any changes in the software any big things coming up the business it might be um 
you know, taking off for Christmas or New Year's or partnerships we've got going on or, you know, big issues that the whole company is to pull together to, to resolve. And again, it's a very quick, quick announcement to the whole company while you have their attention. Yeah, high level stuff without going into all the nitty gritty. Now, the third section is review. This, this was huge for the operations of my company. Now, the way this came about is that I saw that we would only tackle problems in the business every quarter. Originally, it was every year when we did the business plan, then it became every quarter. And I was like, the business is moving so quick, we need to be addressing issues or ship bits more often. So what we brought about is this whole first section of Celebrate the Report should be done in around 20 to 25 minutes. The next is a chance for everyone in the company to, to list what are issues or annoyances or challenges or ship bits they have coming up. It might be, oh, hey, like I constantly have an issue with my email server. Hey, you know, we're taking too long to issue quotes to our clients. Again, we're not going into fixing it. We're just wanting to list out all the issues in the company so that everyone gets a chance to get heard of things that are annoying them. There's no judgment. There's no side conversations. It's like, let's just brain dump because after this, we go into track, which is to do, and we go into prioritizing those issues. And it's like, okay, out of all those issues, what are going to make the biggest impact to us resolving? And what do we commit to resolving this week? Right now, this is on top of your operational activities. This is on top of your projects. These are two or three little things we can tick off. And what you'll find in the beginning of doing this, there'll be a huge list. But the more your company goes on, like we very rarely in uh, the Game Changers Trade Business School, we very rarely have more than five to six to seven issues because every week they're getting addressed. And what that means is every week our company is getting better. Our profitability is getting better. Our delivery is getting better. Our client experience is getting better because we're addressing them as they come up, not waiting until next quarter. Now, something big might come up that we're like, hey, this needs to be parked until next quarter. It's a big thing. We haven't got capacity right now. We can manage for the next month or two months before the quarter, but it's a way for us to constantly iterate. The other thing that comes up on issues is anybody's rocks that are off track. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where if someone said they're off track. You can look at going, is there a reason? Are you, do you know why you're off track? Do you need some help? Do you need some support? Um, and, and they may go, no, I'm all good. Oh, this is the reason I got off track. I'm all good here. And you go, right, you move on. Or it may be, well, actually, you know, ABC happened uh, and I need some support. So that's where you list them as to do's and actions and they're top line addressed, assigned to somebody. It's very, very important with a to do that they get assigned to somebody as uh, being responsible for that. Absolutely. And so once you have those issues down, I, I alluded to it before, is that you then go and prioritise the group. It's like, okay, if we can only get three things done this week, what are they and in what order? It's generally pretty clear. There might be a bit of argument between a couple of employees. That's good. That That's healthy conflict. And it shows they actually give a shit enough about the business to go to bat for what's important for them. Uh, but in the to-do section, it's going through and listing, okay, what are those things we need to do this week to get the issues resolved? Now, we always review the last week's to-dos before we allocate the new to-dos and make sure that, again, they're getting ticked off and done. Anything to add on that to-do section, Marina? Yeah, probably that I think if um, to-dos start carrying over, over and over and over, that's something worth addressing. They maybe need to be a project or set aside. Um, the idea of the to-dos is that they're done and resolved by the time you get to the next me next meeting and you keep that rhythm going. Yeah, Absolutely. You know, I want to just point out this point in time too, like this allows that in a 60-minute meeting weekly, for me as the owner, if I'm involved in these meetings, I'm actually not too much these days or Heather, my integrator, to get a really good gauge on where my staff are at, both personally and professionally. Because anyone out there should know that staff have personal things that show up in business. I often believe we never have business problems, we have personal problems that get expressed through our business. And this allows my team leaders to have the side conversations outside of meetings to support my team personally, which of course has a huge impact professionally as well. So this is a really good gauge to, I guess, have those performance conversations at a very micro level ongoingly rather than waiting till things become a, a huge problem and affect the business and business's growth. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's, there's no reason these meetings can't happen, uh, you know, especially now even you can do them on Zoom. Like I was talking to a client a while ago. So, like, oh, but we're all off doing AB and we, we you know, geographically we're in different locations and, and we go to, we start at this point and we head out to our jobs. So we'll sit, sit in the car park uh, and, and jump on, your, on, on Zoom. There is no reason why at the same time people can't all just park for a moment and, and get on and contribute in the meeting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I guess this brings us to the wrap up. And again, just just sit with what I shared a moment ago about that kind of like small insight. Again, this is a really good way to judge where it's at. So we have two things. One is stars. Every Friday, an email goes out to my team and my team have to vote one person in the company that they thought did an outstanding job and allocate what they did to one of our values. We have, we have four values. And so it's like this week I nominate Miranda for the value of, you know, outcome focused, you know, and as a personal message, Miranda, I really love the way that you tackled X, Y, Z. It showed that you're committed to being outcome focused. Well done. Great job. Now we go around, it's a five to 10 minutes where everyone gets an acknowledgement and the people that aren't getting acknowledgements, it's almost a bit of a self-reflection of, wow, why didn't I get a start? What do I need to do to step up this next week? And those that have done an outstanding job get acknowledged for their efforts. But again, more than anything, it's the way that we constantly cultivate the values. If you've read my book, The Path of Freedom, you know that values need to be alive and active in the company. This is one of those ways that we do that. So it's a chance to pat people on the back publicly, to recognize them. It meets the need for significance, for belonging, for love and connection, uh, and also causes the whole company again to want to do better. And the last thing we end on is score. We, we shoot around and it's like everyone rate the meeting out of 10. One being it was terrible, huge waste of time. 10 being it was productive, it was insightful, I loved it. And what's one word that demonstrates how you're feeling now, one word close? So I might say eight, uh, gratitude, eight, uh, powerful, eight, aligned, clarity. Yeah, and then we we total them up and we add actually an average score and we record that every week. And that's really exciting because that overall gives us a track of um, really how we're performing and how the, 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 the culture um, and how we're, we're moving, how aligned the team is, um, we're on track, all sorts of things because um, it's a really good indicator when we when we do that number every week. We go, oh, we got this number. We got 9.8 this week. We, oh, 9.2. That was a bit lower today. And there's often reasons for it. So very, very powerful. Um, you know, it's the structure of running a really effective meeting where you get through the stuff that matters. You discuss and sort out the, you know, the, the shit bits, the issues. Um, you're tracking towards your projects, tracking towards your goals, your rocks, um, and you're checking in and 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 measuring, not measuring, I suppose, but getting a getting a gauge or a measure on how your people are, yeah. uh, and and connecting them around that common goal and why you're there. Uh, it's how we head towards our our vision and mission in our business. It's how we keep our values alive, and it's how we create the change that we want to head towards our goals. Yeah, we've we've distilled this process over the last six years, and it's pretty solid. It's not the way that I run a daily toolbox meeting with the team. Um, there is some elements that I'd pull into that, but this is more so the structure for a weekly all hands meeting. Um, you know, if someone scores, you know, quite a low score in the meeting, you might ask them to give a give a reason publicly, like, "Hey, why, Miranda, why did you score us at five? Yeah. Right? And it's something that maybe you overlooked. But again, we find this allows your team to feel aligned, feel heard to belong while also moving your company forwards. And I guess the last part is consistency, right? Which is step number five. It's all well and good to have these great plans, but if you're someone that constantly focuses on a shiny thing and never sees things through, you're not gonna earn the trust of your team in your, your effective leadership. And so set this thing up and run it consistently. It might be lumpy in the beginning, it might run over 60 minutes, but the more that you go through this process, the more that you can refine it, the more that you will start to notice how strategically you start thinking about your business, how aligned your staff are, and just through going through that process, you're going to notice a huge shift in the performance of your business. Yeah. So the saying goes, it won't happen overnight, but it will happen. <laughs> there you go. And and so sharp, keep doing it. Just just keep doing it. Trust trust in the system. And you know, so if you if you've got um, maybe a disengaged team or you're experiencing any flavor or version of any of the problems we talked about at the beginning, this is one of the ways that you can solve that. So download, uh, start it, get it going, book it in, and and do it. Trust the system, trust the process. It works. Yeah, absolutely. 
So look, uh, two things before we finish up. If you want a hand uh, putting this in place or anything else before we go to Trade Business School, uh, click on the link somewhere below, have a chat with the team. Let's see if we are a good fit to help you grow. You will see a significant return on investment of both the money you invest with us and your time as our clients do at Trade Business School. And number two, uh, you can also get a copy of this worksheet by clicking below. If you're not a member already of the trading, uh, the Trades and General Contractors Global free Facebook group, make sure you join that because every week we share uh, things like this and tools to help you grow a profitable business that can work without you. Miranda, always such a pleasure having you on these podcasts and uh, jamming together and sharing, I guess, the, the years of knowledge that we put together to help the trade businesses grow. Yeah, I love I love sharing these conversations. I know the value, I know the benefit, the power in these. So um, just love bringing this stuff to all of you. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Can't wait to talk to you again soon. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.